what up everyone it's Skipton Singh and I am back again with a review of The Rise of Skywalker and this is a spoiler filled review so if you have not yet seen the movie go and check out my spoiler free review which is in the description down below or on the card whichever direction it pops up in but otherwise I just hit the camera nonetheless let's get to the review Alright, so I just came back from watching the movie a second time, literally I just came back like 10 minutes ago and did settle this up and whatnot. But the movie, I saw it a second time with one of my friends from work and I just... I don't know how I feel about this movie, it's still a mixed bag. There are things about the movie which I like, there are things about it which I don't like. The action for the most part is pretty good and it's entertaining. Well, I still don't think the lightsaber battles have much tension to them because they just happen, they just happen. And one of them, the one that's on that ice snowy planet, I can't remember its name right now, which later gets destroyed, and it's also on Kylo Ren's personal quarters, in personal quarters. That's really cool how they switch between the two locations and everything. Let's talk about force powers. Force healing is in this, which I really am happy to see. Because I remember playing the Revenge of the Sith game on the PS2 and really using force healing as often as I could because it is such a useful technique. The one thing is it drains a lot of energy from you because it is such a powerful technique to use. But everyone in this movie uses it so easily and so often it just doesn't make sense in that aspect. It should be taking more of a toll on a person. Yes, it is the reason, and I'm going into real spoilers here, why Kylo Ren dies because he gives up the last of his life for Rey, but that should be taking out a lot of energy in more of the, more of the instances in which they use it. With other force powers, we have the lightsaber throw finally coming into a movie where they call back the lightsaber, which is really cool to see. I don't know what Rey does when she puts Luke and Leia's lightsaber into the sand. I don't know if she's just using a normal force power or whatnot. I have no problem with that. So the only real one I just really question in this movie is the force heal. Because Kylo Ren touches Vader's helmet and then it seems like he controls the drone for a second and somehow connects with Rey and everything. How does that work? Why does he need Vader's helmet to do that? I don't really know. And carrying on with the rest of the movie, the story, it really goes against The Last Jedi. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because it just further disconnects this trilogy, which is a really bad thing to do. Yeah, sure, this ties in more so with The Force Awakens, but if The Last Jedi said her parents were no one, she's nobody, the movie should have stuck with that and not made her a Palpatine. I wasn't as surprised when that was really when that was announced in the movie and whatnot as my family were because I remember the rumors oh Ray could be a Palpatine or Ray could be this and when this trailers and everything in this movie started playing back on the fact that you know Ray uh, Ray's um, lineage will be explored and whatnot you kind of expect it to be one of these things so I'm not really surprised by that but I just wish they didn't do it because. Now it just goes against the other movie and you're trying to retcon it. And I feel like a lot of this movie tries to retcon events of The Last Jedi. Rose is barely in this movie. Um, Poe's character is as if he didn't experience anything from The Last Jedi. In The Last Jedi he learned to become a leader. But in this movie he's like saying he wasn't prepared to be a leader. He's kind of a bad leader per se. I don't know why Finn becomes a general so easily. And the whole banter between the three of them, while entertaining to see, feels a little undeserved because we see a lot of people get angry with Poe, like Finn and Rey, they seem so disconnected with Poe and they get angry at the time and it's like, I'm not Leia, I'm, and then um, Finn's like, yeah, you're not Leia, and that kind of just, it's like, what does that mean? Like, why are you guys getting so angry at one another? No one's telling Poe that Rey is a Palpatine. For some reason, there's something Finn that needs to tell Rey, but we never actually hear him tell it, so we don't know what that is. Poe's um, past being of a spice smuggler is interesting and all, but him and um, Bliss, what's her name? I can't remember, Kerry Russell's character, Quarry or Worry, something like that, Worry, it's not really Worry, but her character and him, they have cool um, chemistry and everything, and you can really see when Kerry Russell shows her eyes, you can see, see some of that pain in her eyes, I love, but it feels so little for that relationship they act as if they have. And the same thing can be said with Rey and Kylo. They have all this 
tension between them and later on they kiss which is the stupidest thing ever because it just doesn't work with the past two movies and the, the Kylo Ren so easily becomes Ben Solo. Leia dies and then Rey says she wanted to take his hand as Ben Solo and then he actually just throws away his lightsaber and everything and it feels too quickly for everything that happened considering in the last movie he just really became the full-on bad guy and in this movie he's not. Hux is also wasted, he's clearly gonna die the moment he becomes the traitor because shot in the leg, why would they shoot you in the leg? Why wouldn't they kill you, General Hux? Why would you think that would help you get away with it? I don't know, General Pride, he was kinda eh, he was just there to be honest. I don't know what the big deal was of his character. But the one character on the dark side which I was really glad to see, besides Palpatine who I will get into later, we have, I believe it's Rey Salone from the Aftermath novels. Because I remember, if I recall correctly, she goes into the Unknown Regions and I believe she's a captain in this, in, as one of the Sith captains in the Sith First Final Order fleet. So that was a good thing to see and while I'm on the topic of bad guys, or the villains I should say, I do like the idea of how Palpatine was Snoke the whole time. But once again, it feels like a major retcon of The Last Jedi. It's cool though how Palpatine was the voice that um, Kylo Ren heard from Vader's helmet. Um, I also just wonder how Palpatine got Snoke out into the world and also how Snoke was so powerful. Because I remember them saying, I swear to god, I remember J.J. Abrams and that saying that Ka Snoke is more powerful than Ka um, Sidious and Palpatine. The, the same person but and also Vader and everything but then Palpatine was Snoke the whole time but then how couldn't Luke defeat Snoke how powerful was Palpatine as Snoke when he was controlling him and everything or well, because Palpatine was Snoke as the movie announces it just it just raises so many questions and I think that's the problem with this movie it's fine having the finale the final chapter have a few open-ended questions because it's like oh this is where they're gonna go to in the future in a book or something that's fine but when you just answer questions that have already been answered in The Last Jedi and then give us new questions like how did the Al Palpatine survive? They mentioned cloning and all these kind of stuff which are the ways of the dark side but how did he actually clone himself? When did he do it? It doesn't look like a clone of himself. It looks like a weakened and actually destroyed body and everything. So I don't think it's a clone. Clearly he has clones of Snoke's body which is evident because you can see it but how did he come back why did he come back why is he doing this why does he want Rey when he had a child a son why didn't he use the son to become the emperor of the next emperor his lineage he didn't surely didn't know Rey was gonna have that raw power when she was a kid so you know you just wonder what exactly and when did he even have a child how did Palpatine have a child he clearly had it before episode 3 because if he had it after episode 3 it's really hard to believe that he was in a romantic relationship I don't really know maybe he had as Emperor he had a bunch of um, wives he married into so that way he could procreate and whatnot and if that's the route they're going with it's it's definitely not Star Wars so I'm really unsure about how all this works. So continuing on, this is going to be a really long review because I'm just going to talk about the movie and talk about the movie. What else is there to say? So I really like Leia's role in this movie. It clearly feels like this was meant to be Leia's movie. It's a shame though that in so many shots of Leia, she looks really fake and just digitally added into that shot. The way she moves, the way she acts. And I know they were limited, so I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and just appreciate what we got. But some of the scenes are just so off-putting with how she, her body reacts and everything. I do like the idea that she was trained in the Jedi ways. I do like the idea that Luke actually went out to try to find the Emperor and that Sith homeworld as Ep Epigo or something it's called. And it's he went on that mission with Lando, which was really nice to see and hear about actually. It's cool that we get more of a backstory about what happened during that 30 year time jump between episode 6 and episode 7. But it's still not enough, especially for what this movie tries to do. While we're on the topic of returning characters, Lando doesn't have much screen time, which kind of sucks. Um, but C-3PO has a good amount of screen time, which 
I kind of expected considering how prominent Anthony Daniels is in the promotion and it was really nice to see. How he had his memory reset was um, very emotional in, idea, in an idea but then not long later he just gets his memory back and it's like okay so there wasn't much with that. The same thing with Chewbacca dying, you know Chewie's not gonna die that way and plus in the trailer you also see he's in different scenes so it wasn't much of a surprise when he was revealed to be alive. The way that they describe that the thousand generations of Jedi are all in Rey, I get it in the idea that she's learning the ways of the Jedi, she's in the future of the Jedi, but that's not how the Force works. The same thing happens with Palpatine, he's like, once you kill me Rey, all of the Sith will come in one with you, will be one because all the Sith are within me. But that's not how it works. All the Sith aren't in Palpatine, that's it just doesn't work like that. All the Jedi aren't in Rey, so when they say those lines it's so bad because it's not true at all, that's not how the Force works. And then when Rey does a whole fighting with um, Palpatine, I really wanted an epic final battle because Palpatine, he gets his youth back essentially, he gets his power back. He could have gotten more life force clearly from Rey and Ren because they were still alive after he drained them and he could have gone into a much younger state from when he was in the Clone Wars and fighting Darth Maul and Savage. He was so badass then. If he went into that state, got into a battle with Rey and Kylo, that would be amazing. It'd be very hard to get Rey and Kylo to win, but I think that would be much more impressive and interesting and entertaining than simply having Palpatine use force lightning as Rey uses two lightsabers and slowly pushes towards him. <sighs> because he can surely do more than that. Meant to be so powerful, he shot lightning up into the sky and just I loved how he did that. He did all that lightning stuff with the ships, it looked so cool and everything. But he went out so easily. Speaking of how people went out, I guessed and I predicted that Kylo would be redeemed and that he would die, he wouldn't survive throughout the whole thing. Um, and you know, that's what happened. He gave his life force to Rey and then Rey kissed him, which was the stupidest thing I'd ever seen. It really ruined that whole moment. Um, and then Kylo died instead leading to everyone celebrating a happy victory, which was actually one of the moments where I cried because um, I really enjoyed that moment, just seeing everyone happy and everything. And then going to the final scene, which is where Rey returns Luke's lightsaber, not even returns, he just puts Luke's lightsaber and Leia's lightsaber at the um, Lars family home in the sand, and she adopts the name of Skywalker. Which is alright, there was a guy in the cinema just today when I saw it the second time who said what the F at that because he said oh she's gonna be called Skywalker and then he's like what the F. And really it's a little ridiculous, I can get why they did it but the idea is now that she's a Skywalker, the Skywalker saga hasn't ended. All they had to do was kill off all the Skywalkers which is what they did and then don't make Rey adopt the Skywalker name. But they did that, so the Skywalker saga is clearly still open for more possibilities in the future, and this is clearly not the end. So that's one thing I really don't like, because that's just, they're not closing the book on the main thing they're meant to close the book on. So I've got a, just one or two notes on my phone here, I'm just gonna quickly talk about them. So one last negative that I want to talk about, because there are probably a lot of things I also want to say, I'm just forgetting a lot of them, but Dio, the droid that was introduced in this movie, had no purpose at all. He was clearly there just to sell toys. Um, it'd be fine if he had some sort of purpose uh, helping reveal how to get to the Sith temple and everything, but he didn't. It looked like he was going to, and maybe he had like one or two information they could use in the fight, but it was nothing of significance which changed the fight as a whole. One thing that probably one of my favorite moments is when all these ships come together and I get goosebumps. I had goosebumps twice already, both times I saw that. It was really emotional. I cried as Poe was struggling to be commander, uh, general, even though he should be a good one and everything based on The Last Jedi and his character build up and whatnot. Something's clearly wrong and I feel like if we get books or something, a TV show that explains the character's development from the last movie to this movie and even more of the backstory or even answering more of the questions, 
then I'd better appreciate what's going on in this movie. But other than that though, I really liked the sh ships all coming in, it was really cool to see. The battle wasn't as great as I expected, I expected more from that final epic battle with all these ships. All they had to do was just destroy the guns and apparently the whole ship would blow up which seemed pretty excessive considering you're just blowing up the gun at the bottom of the ship itself and all the Star Destroyers have planet killing weapons which is the final game plan of the Skywalker Saga which isn't that creative to be honest. And then moving on from that, some other positives I had even though I just said a few negatives. Some of the positives I have was when Han appeared and I did not see that coming. When I heard his voice, I was like, wait, is that Han? Is that Luke? Who is that? It was Han. It was really nice to see. And then one specific moment I love the most is when Ben is about to say, I love you to him, but he doesn't. And Han replies, I know, which is a callback to the fact that he says, I know to, when, to Leia when she says, I love you. That as well, I loved seeing Luke and Leia when they were young training. Luke looked much better. Luke looked much better than Leia. But still, it was really nice to see that. The fact that Leia has training, the fact that Luke never gave up on the Jedi so easily, it was such a pleasure to see. Finally, a few more things to add in that I really liked was when all the Jedis were set, telling Rey to get up, that to believe in the Force, the Force will be with her always. I could hear Ayla Secura, Shakti, Kanan, Yoda, Anakin, Obi-Wan, Mace Windu, Qui-Gon, and I'm sure Ki Adi Mundi was there, Kit Fisto, I'm sure there were a bunch of Jedi there, maybe even Ahsoka, and I really enjoyed that. It was a really nice moment. The one question I, well not the question, but the one thing I really enjoyed out of that as well is that Anakin also says, bring balance like I once did, which is such a cool line because Anakin did bring balance to the Force, and I'm glad that they're acknowledging the fact that Anakin did bring balance to the Force. It just won't, didn't last forever. So there's a lot I really want to say about this movie and I feel like this review is already going to be close to 20 minutes long. So I am just going to end it there. Maybe give one or two more points and just also tell you other channels you can go see who I think will go into more depth about things that I want to talk about but just won't for the sake of this video. So there's Thor Skywalker, Robot Head, Star Wars Explained, Hello Greedo and a bunch of other Star Wars channels which you can go check out who will probably talk about this movie and things that I also want to talk about in more videos and that I can't cover. But finally, I'm going to end with a few more things. While the opening of the film was very entertaining and I enjoyed how fast paced it was, how quickly it got to the story and everything moving forward, the pacing of the movie is very off for me. It felt at times very quick or either very slow and it dragged on as well. It felt like, um, I got a few other questions as well. Um, the girl um, ha Hasana or something, Hana, uh, who rides those uh, horse thingies and stuff on the in the system of Endor, she says that it's you can't get it's too dangerous to ride the skiffs to the Death Star wreckage. But then they end up doing that anyway, and no one suffers any consequences. So Ray does it by herself; she's fine. Then um, Hasan or whatever Hana, Hanan or whatever, goes with Finn, and they're fine. It's just no problem at all. Along with that, when they actually found it, Death Star Ruins and had the blade, which I believe is the Blade of Mortis, which is a nice touch to it. And they doing the whole measuring thingy. That only measuring thing works if the Star Destroy if the Death Star is in the wreckage way it is. Because if the Death Star was just normal the way it was, it wouldn't be doing it that way. And the blade wasn't constructed based on the Death Star itself or on the wreckage. If it is the Blade of Mortis, then it was already created beforehand, and only the inscription would have the location of the Wayfinder. So it just doesn't really make much sense to me. Maybe I'm getting it wrong, maybe I'm missing something. It just doesn't make too much sense to me how that's able to find the precise location when in reality it shouldn't. Ray was teased to being to the, going to the dark side. It was a really quick, force vision or something it it I predicted it was a vision didn't expect it to be anything much it was much shorter than I thought it'd be though and unnecessary for the most part because we already knew she's confronting her demons of being a Palpatine and everything um, and yeah just it wasn't very necessary so I didn't really like it all that much and finally what I am going to say is that not all the Jedi or force users fade 
away or become one of the force after they perish. It takes a lot of training to do so, okay? So I don't know why so many Jedi are being treated like that. Kylo Ren and Leia both faded away when they passed away, but I didn't really believe that they were the type of people who could do that. Um, Leia didn't really show much training in the Force based on the previous two movies, so in this movie, although they show that she trained and stuff, she didn't really seem like much of that well trained enough to actually become one of the Force and go through the trials and tribulations. Is that the word? The trials to become a Force ghost and whatnot. But she did, and some Jedi can just be burnt, cremated and whatnot, so I just feel like there's some sort of um, inconsistency there or something. But otherwise, the movie is such a mixed bag. I've probably said a lot more negatives than positives, but that's just because I want this movie to be so amazing and blow me away. J.J. Abrams, Kevin Smith or whatever said that the ending was so good that they, Kevin Smith couldn't see it because J.J. Abrams said it would blow his mind and stuff. But it didn't blow my mind. You can't give me such high expectations and then deliver me with such a satisfactory or such a standard ending to it or standard movie as a whole. So I feel like the movie should get a 5 out of 10 for being so basic. But at the same time, the sound design, the sound editing was so good. The planner with the Sith temple and everything, I really loved that editing. The sound was so impactful. And the production design was really cool. The ideas of the planets were really nice. All the ideas presented had potential, but it just fell a little flat. So I really don't know what score to give it. So for now, just understand that it's a mixed bag and it could be anywhere between a five to a seven for me right now. I just really enjoyed some aspects of it and were disappointed by others. So thank you for watching this really long spoiler filled review. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about the movie. What was your favorite part? What didn't you like? How does it rank with the other two movies in this trilogy? Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and until next time, I'll see yous. Thank you.